men's and women's varsity tennis teams here at Helix High School. And welcome to the first in our series of instructional videotapes of net play. And net play is the most important thing that, uh, that I look for as a coach. And that's why I've assembled an all-star cast here from my team, probably the best volleyers on, out of the uh, 50 youngsters that I have out here. And they're going to teach you, with a little assistance from myself, how you can volley as well as they do. Okay, the five people that I've assembled today are first, Doug Corey, who this year played uh, quite a bit of varsity, and he started out this year and hadn't played much tennis before, and he's probably the, uh, the best learner of the volley and perhaps the best volleyer on our team. He also has uh, very big blue eyes. The second player that uh, we're going to have demonstrating the volley and hopefully teaching you quite a bit about it is Gina Saro, also a first-year player this year. She's only been playing about nine months, and she's also demonstrated that she can volley with, uh, with some of the best players in San Diego County. The third player that's going to help you out today is Eric Person, also a first-year varsity man this year, one of the biggest, strongest people on our, on our varsity team this year. He compiled about a 500 record in league play, and we're looking for him to be an all-league player next year. The fourth player has come a long way with his volley this year. In fact, uh, he did not come to the net very often at all before the season started, and now he's probably one of the better volleyers in the league. He's uh, first team all league selection, had a 15-3 record in singles, and, and he's really improved his play because he comes to the net quite a bit more. And the fifth player, last but not least, is Christine Fonseca. Ordinarily a baseliner, Chris this year has learned how to play the net much better. In fact, uh, she's become a really good volleyer, and, and, uh, and she does that with a rare shot. She uses a two-hand backhand volley. And that's why she's here to demonstrate to, to those of you who are a little weaker and feel more comfortable using two hands uh, how to do that stroke. Person, and I'm here to demonstrate the forehand volley. Now there are three main things to remember when you're at the net. And that is to keep your racket head high and in front of you with a straight arm in, in a continental grip, which is where your knuckle crosses over the bevel of the racket and to keep your feet moving at all times. So his racket head's high and he's using the continental grip. Ready, Eric? Go. For the volley, now I'm going to talk more about the stroke. Forehand volley is hit with a short stroke by bending your wrist back and taking the racket back about six inches and then punching it without taking the full swing. So when you do that, it produces underspin and not top spin. Try to check to see if you're hitting the forehand volley right. Just look at your racket after you hit it and your racket head should be above your wrist and have an open head. Position just like Eric, Eric described. Very well done. Uh, Eric and Gina have mentioned, Eric mentioned that we should have our racket head high in front of our body and to keep our feet moving and to use a continental grip rather than a forehand grip. So you put your, your right knuckle on the first bevel of the racket and that gives you a continental grip. Gina talked about how short the stroke was in the forehand ball, how it's a short little punch rather than a swing. And she mentioned that in order to check this, in order to check that we're getting underspin and hitting with a short swing, we check to see if our racket head is high and if our racket face is open after the stroke. We have Chris Bidays followed by Doug Corey and then last but not least again will be Christine Fonseca. I'm going to switch you on the backhand volley. The backhand volley is a lot like the forehand volley in that you still use a, a, four, a continental grip, you still have a straight arm and your legs are still moving. Secondly, you put your left hand on the throat of the racket so you can pull the racket back sooner. And thirdly, Finally, keep your right arm straight on the back end volley so you have a solid stroke. Thanks, Chris. Hi, my name is Doug Corey, and uh, the most important thing to me um, when you're doing a volley is uh, to run through the ball 
And in order to do that, you uh, don't stick your butt out and go sideways, you just move through it. Another important aspect to uh, backhand volley is to uh, keep, keep your arm straight and move through the ball with a straight arm. Um, as Gina mentioned, it's a very short stroke. Okay, uh, another important thing for a uh, backhand volley is to be hit with underspin. And in order to check if uh, your backhand volley is being hit right, check and see if uh, your wrist or the racket head is above your wrist and that when you hit the ball your racket racket head is open. Having your racket head high and your racket face open, you have to have a straight arm for a good backhand volley. Okay, now we're going to have Doug hit a few backhand volleys for us and, and the most important thing that Doug mentioned was moving through the ball and he does just as well as anyone on my team. So take a close look at this. Okay, now our last uh, demonstrator is Chris Monseca, and she's going to demonstrate the two-hand backhand volley. Hello, I'm Chris Monseca. I'm bad, and I want you to be bad too. I'm not going to be discussing with you today. Since I'm not a vegan buff like Chris Bays or Doug or even Gina, us little people have to do this two-handed backhand. This consists of a double continental grip. Let me show. Top one is like that. You put your bottom hand in a continental grip, put them close together. I know. Can see that? Okay. Alright. Now just like in all the other um, molly, you want to have straight arms. Don't bend this one. This is just a support for you to help you hit with a dirty arm. You want to have both um, arms straight. You want to keep your feet in motion. Your racket above your wrist, kind of in a right angle here. Your um, head up high. Never let it drop because the ball will go right in hand back and ball. One is just like a, forehand, a left hand forehand volley, which would be like this. It's important not to swing over, but keep a sturdy grip and run through the ball. Another way of doing a two-hand backhand volley is by using your left hand as support. You still run through the ball, but after the contact of the ball, you release the, your uh, left hand back. It's just a use of support. Okay, now... Okay, now... Christine is going to hit a couple of two-hand backhand volleys to demonstrate how she hits it. Okay, that sums up the demonstration portion of our of our first videotape. We hope they got a lot out of it. Just to summarize a few of the points that were made, although there were, there were many. First of all, all of the all of the kids said that they needed a straight arm on, on all of their shots. And they kept their racket head far away from their body. They emphasized that they used a very short stroke for the volley, and that each of the volleys had underspin on it. In other words, they just hit straight through the ball with an open racket face, and that produced underspin. And the point that Doug Corey made is perhaps the most important. After you after the fundamentals of the volley, and that is to move through the ball. This makes you a much more effective player as you make contact a lot closer to the net in this manner and you're able to develop more angles, etc. Thanks for uh, having us in your home. We certainly appreciate it. <laughs>
looked like he hustled. I just took a dozen out of my pocket. Oh, okay. Thank you. Well, now stop. Stand right around. Yeah. Stand on the service line. All right. Now, you know, guys, we got, we're going to have like what? one or two spots next year, right? The band is probably going to have one of them. Because he plays there already, but other than that, I don't know. You know, what are we playing for, right? We're playing to, to play really well, I guess. We can have fun at first, but varsity tennis wouldn't be a bad goal. Now, why couldn't do it? Because he's got too many other obligations, right? right. But this is this is my JV, right? Outside of those four guys playing right now, and, and you guys know that they're not any good, right? Well, okay, they're okay. But anyway, the most important skill you can get is to volley well. It's the most important thing because when openings come up on varsity. They're not being double. Man, if you can't volley. You know who, that, who played the most varsity matches this year? Is it Alex? Who's probably our best guy in the JV, I mean, as far as winning matches. No, it's it's uh, this guy over here, Corey, right? Because he may be the best volleyer on the team. I mean, barring, but he may be the best volleyer on this on the whole tennis team. I beat him 10 out. As far as technically doing. Now, you can beat him, right? Yeah. When you play singles. Yeah, but but if I watch him play doubles, he plays far superior tennis to you in doubles. You know what I'm saying? As a coach, I, I, I don't want you on the court playing doubles if there's a choice between you and him, and yet you'll beat his butt in singles. Play, uh, really important to, uh, now I also got ahead of himself and went cross court. Hit the ball deep and in the corner, and you're good to play. You don't really try for as much as I'm hitting right now, because I'm trying to hit too well, but he gives me a short ball. And the point might be over it. Right? Ah! If you get a short ball in tennis, you're in trouble. Right hand the entire time. Did you get Carl's ball or no? Good thing to do, Artie. 